Welcome to the beginning of Series 51, everyone. Both of us are really excited for you to hear all about this game that literally encompasses <laughs> everything Ryan has ever wanted in a game, possibly uh -huh. even more than his own game. Uh-huh. Uh, but before we get to that, before you get to hearing just like Ryan's sheer glee and you can hear his smile through the audio. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do have one very special announcement. Absolutely. Our big announcement at the start of Series 51. And I was doing a drum roll and you just kept talking. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of at the beginning of our fifth year in podcasting. Hey, we started our own Patreon. Woo! Yeah! Yay! Applause! <laughs> Uh, we we are both really excited about launching this to help cover the costs of producing this show every month. Uh, we are currently paying for things like our website, editing tools, etc. Uh, and, and this will really help us cover those costs. Uh, so you can find out all about it at patreon.com slash character creation cast. We are still part of the One Shot Network. Fear not. That is not changing. Mm -hmm. Uh, what is changing is that we'll have a way for you to get more out of the show by supporting us on Patreon directly. Um, we have a variety of levels from $1 all the way up to $50 a month if you really, really love us. Mm -hmm. um, we think we've come up with some really awesome rewards to try and make it worth it for you. Um, and that's going to range all the way from bonus content and early release episodes all the way to a game with us and a bunch of stuff in between. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've said it a number of times lately, but we really are excited about all the things that we have coming up uh, and all the ideas that we have for the show going forward. Like I, I'm seeing some of the stuff that we're putting out. Uh, like Amelia is like, hey, here's this thing. And I'm like, uh, it's just amazing. Uh, so I'm really, really excited to get that into everybody's uh, eyes and ears. Um, but your support would mean the world to us, uh, no matter what level. Uh, if you want to hear all about our Patreon in more detail, um, stay tuned after the episode for uh, plenty of more specifics. Uh, now that we've said all of that, we're trying to keep it short. So you can listen to our calls to action at the end of the show. You can find all about the Alchemistress's Kickstarter, as well as a special thanks and a review. So stay tuned. But for now, let's get to the episode and learn about Ryan's new favorite game. Absolutely. Enjoy. Welcome to Character Creation Cast, a show where we discuss and create characters, the best part of role-playing games, with guests using their favorite systems. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan, and this episode, my co-host Amelia and I are excited to welcome Allison K. Cole and Dora D. Rogers, creators of the game we're covering this month, Alchemistresses. Welcome to Character Creation Cast, both of you. I'm I'm excited about this. This is going to be fun. Mm-hmm. I think we're also equally excited yes. um, because magical girls and blood magic, from what we know, yes. uh, are two things that people here are excited to dabble in. <laughs> two great tastes that taste great together. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, Allison, do you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself? What kind of projects you're working on? Where people can find you? All the good, good stuff. Oh, of course I can. Uh, I'm a tabletop roleplay designer. Uh, actually started in LARP. And so I do those two things. Um, I make a lot of games about intimacy, queerness. Uh, anytime I can make people make uncomfortable eye contact for long periods of time in a game, <laughs> that will be included. Um, and I have founded a worker-owned game cooperative, which you can find at softchaos.games. We are soft chaos. Uh, and you can find me at Allison K. Cole on Twitter, mostly. Very cool. Uh, and Dora, how about yourself? 
Yeah. Hi, I am Dora. I am a writer um, and also a game designer, um, partly through dint of, of dating Allison. She is, <laughs> you just wind up designing a bunch of games, it turns out. Just just recruited into the ranks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you can find some of my games work and also some interactive fiction I've written at dcity.itch.io. Um, and you can find me on Twitter at, uh, at Dora D underscore. Wonderful. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get into this and we can start by discussing what this game is all about. What's in a game? All right. So what is the core concept of Alchemistresses? Uh, so Alchemistresses is a magical girl TTRPG where you kind of play as two characters. Um, one in the present day where you do high school hijinks, you know, crushes, tests, who's going to be at the track meet, who got a date to prom. And mm. then another from a past world. And you're like these reincarnations of these powerful, powerful, magical beings. Um, so that past world will build together. So we don't know what it looks like yet. Um, but it's kind of reconciling your high school hijinks with the fate of the universe all at once. Oh, I love that. I, I, oh, yeah. I have uh, I have goosebumps uh, for for this sort of storytelling, so I'm I'm really excited to dive into this. Yeah, you just said like all of Ryan's favorite I words know. right there, <laughs> like <laughs> high school romance, magical girls, like yeah, you came in prepared for this. <laughs> so it's a I mean we did prepare, but also lovely coincidence that we just yes. happen to have possibly the exact same taste in games. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this was I came into the process of designing this, you know, it was it was already, I mean, in a fairly finished state when I when I joined the team. And it was very similar. I was just like, wait, so it's about magical girls in high school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Give me, get, tell me more. <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about the setting, um, you know, kind of the genre aside from magical girls? Uh, yeah. Did you want to start with this one? Yeah, sure. So, um, so setting creation is a part of character creation. So we are planning on, on doing that and exemplifying that with you today, both, um, in terms of the present world and the past world. Although like, I, I mean, we definitely see creativity in both of those, but, uh, you know, especially the past world obviously is mm. something that where you can really stretch your legs and, and build the kind of fantastical world that, that you want to. Uh, we are also going to release the game with a few pre-made settings to help people who just want to like jump in or take advantage of somebody else's creativity. Sure. Um, I wrote one of those, um, you know, another member of Soft Chaos, Jens Marcotte wrote one, uh, Naomi Clark wrote one, any others you want to call out, Allison? No, those are, those are some of the, you know, some of my favorite. We have a bunch of guest writers on this because I got really excited and commissioned all these people <laughs> I think are cool to contribute. Yeah. I <laughs> and yeah, so the present day is slice of life is the genre. Sure. This is a very Canadian reference, but like one of our games <laughs> took place on a breaker high. Do you know what that is? Has anyone no. heard of the show? So Ryan Gosling was a loser in a in a high school show in Canada, like in the nineties. And it, it's okay. a school, a high school that is on a boat. And they sure. travel from port to port, studying the world. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's like Why? Degrassi, but on a boat. It's like oh, the kind Degrassi of thing. on a boat. That's my favorite new genre of show. Uh, That's amazing. Yeah. I it's why find Canadians this now. have problems seeing Ryan Gosling as like a heartthrob because he was like literally the loser guy no one would date in this show growing <laughs> up. But like that was one of our slice of life genre uh, genre settings. So it's a little flexible. And then the first question we are actually going to ask as a group when we make the world is. What genre do we want it to be in and what tropes does that entail for the past Ooh. world? Yeah, and see, now you've said collaborative world building and now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so, also so many some of, of my Ryan's cards favorite have been words. Activated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and like one of the things we did when we got people to write worlds is we wanted them to be like not as stereotypically magical girl, like not fantasy always doesn't have to be one kingdom so someone did like a, a mech style world and someone did a gothic horror style world and mm. someone did a sci-fi like alternate universe style worlds uh Very cool. so those are all there and, and now you're mentioning genre blending and my goodness uh this checks everything off the list <laughs> <laughs> Fist pumps don't like... translate well to podcasts, but I just but, did. Nope. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. But like nailed it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so what sort of tools do we need to play this game then? D, you can do this. You're oh, better at not missing things <laughs> than Thank I you. am. <laughs> yeah, so you really just need uh, rules, character sheets of whatever kind of thing we have. Um, we've developed for playtesting. We've been playtesting mostly during the pandemic, at least for the last few years. So, you know, we have some very robust like digital um, character sheets as well. Um, and then you need dice like a, a D20 through a D2, aka a coin flip. Um, mm. There's going to be some uh, cool stuff that's sort of an extra as part of the Kickstarter campaign, which is coming in June. Uh, it might be June when you're listening to this, so it's coming now. <laughs> um, and uh, so there's uh, there's some specific things to uh, help, like uh, trackers for specific things and uh, some like tokens for keeping track of specific things like that. But it's all stuff that you know, and like you can um, you can improvise if you if you didn't sure. back at the right level. But you yeah, like we have a level. very, we, uh, I was excited because I got to design and have like a custom gold coin printed for the D2, right? Oh. Yeah. Um, but you need a penny. Yeah. Which we also right. don't have in Canada anymore. So, which is smart, oh, honestly. Yeah. Like, I, I have so many pennies that like I just like found in my couch yesterday and like I don't know what to do with them. You can't mm -hmm. do anything with pennies. No. And I, I honestly love like kickstarters that have because i'm i'm a sucker for all of those peripherals and like the you know like completionist completionist in me is like i need all of the things but it always is really nice when you like just pick up a book and you know you don't need to buy all of the other stuff just so you're like okay i can just play it even if i don't have it yet yeah. so mm -hmm. i think I allison like and i are contrasting in that sense and that like i'm always i like I, I usually buy the PDF version of anything that I buy. Don't be like me though. Buy the buy the highest tier at the Kickstarter. Yes. But yeah. the <laughs> um but and you know, I just like I, I love games that I can just like, you know, like grab grab one or two dice and play. And then like Allison uh had watching watching her design all of the, the physical items was a was was truly inspiring. I was watching somebody truly in their happy space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely merits to both because yeah. you know, especially if you do buy the PDF and everything, like think about like the fantasy flight games where you need like all of the special dice and everything. Um, and, you know, there are like online tools for a lot of that, but it's like, well, if I just grab the game and I'm like at a friend's house or something and like now I don't have all the stuff for it. And mm. um, but also like it's really pretty. So, yeah, it's <laughs> choices. <laughs> yeah, I learned the decor style clutter core which is oh. like my my design aesthetic in life yeah <laughs> yeah oh that's a good i never like thought of that being a term for it like i know exactly what you're talking about though just based on mm -hmm. that uh, what kind of stories and themes are you hoping people will explore with this i know obviously you're not sitting down at my table to tell me what to do with it um but what kind of things were you kind of aiming for when you made this game so I think one of the biggest things, um, and it comes with a very queer perspective from the design team that we are, is mm -hmm. self-discovery. Um, and kind of this, the, that's what the whole reincarnation mechanic is to me, right? You get to be two people and figure out who of those two people you actually are. Like this person you've grown up with in the mundane world and you've lived as this person your whole life. And then you start getting these memories and feelings that, oh, maybe these things aren't me. So I think a lot of the themes and stories on like a grand thematic scale are rooted, uh, are rooted in that queerness and that self-discovery um, and very the very personal, even though it can be these epic life-saving uh, defeating the negaverse uh, scale co uh, conflicts. Mm. And what do you think, D? Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. And I think that the we'll get into this, but some of the core mechanics are specifically about learning more about yourself, and like that that is how you power up, and where a lot of your abilities come from. It's literally, like you have garnered a new piece of information about mm. your past life, or you know, or how it applies to your present life. Um, so yeah, it, but it's also like, it is also uh, because it has a sort of slice of life aspect and there's some mechanics that specifically reinforce relationships between the characters. I think it is also a game that's very much about, um, about, about, you know, socialness, about friendship, 
about romance as well, uh, which is mm-hmm. where I always I always tend to push it. Um, about yeah. kissing girls, if <laughs> yes. it was Dee's choice at about all times. About kissing girls. It's a game about <laughs> kissing girls, everybody. Um, uh. But it's yeah, we're we're in the middle. Uh, we're right at the end of a, a like sort of camp like poll campaign play test right now that that we've been doing in in preparation for the Kickstarter to launch final things, and it like really is like the. I, th- I think all of the players in that just feel like the the depth of the relationships is is very deep, especially because you get to see people in lots of different contexts, you know, and um, part of the way the relationship mechanics works is they're sort of built in challenges to two relationships and mm. uh, ways mm. to push things. So this, these are all things we'll talk about, but I would add sort of, uh, you know, friendship and and romance potentially to to the, mm. the to self-discovery as a theme. I, I like have to that, say huh? that that like hit me um, when you're talking about like looking, you know, like getting memories from your past and like looking back and being like, oh, now I know this other thing about myself. Like as a queer person, you know, it's like I had like all of these things. And then like as an adult, like when I moved away from my very conservative family, um, looking back, it was like, oh, that's what that was. Like you didn't want to be friends with her. You wanted to date her. And like, you know, <laughs> like looking at mm-hmm. like, oh, mm, yeah, mm, things <laughs> yeah, I didn't know about myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and, you know, I hadn't quite uh, put it in those terms because you're absolutely right. And I think that, you know, like we, we've had a we've had a lot of trans play testers um, mm-hmm. and the, I'm, I'm a trans woman myself. And like it is I, I've definitely seen it used very consciously to explore um, to explore, you know, to explore trans identity, like what yeah. does what what is it like when somebody who thinks of themselves as a boy like finds themselves in a female body, or you know, like vice versa, and yeah. what kind of you know what is what does that do to you? What do you make of that kind of experience? Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, no, you, you're absolutely right. I hadn't, I had, I think you put it very well. I hadn't quite put it in those terms, but uh, it's, I think that's a lot of what's going on there. Yeah, I I love that games can do that. Like I it's one of my favorite things about role playing games is just this ability to you know, like tell kinds of stories and then look at it and be like, "Oh, that's me." <laughs> like yeah, I didn't I didn't mean it to be that, but like, "Oh, I just learned something about myself." <laughs> uh-huh. Absolutely. Uh, and and I really love uh cuz there's a there's a decent amount of magical girl games out there uh mm-hmm. right now and like one of the core tenets of the magical girl genre is that self discovery, and and I love that it sounds like this game has that as you know one of its core mechanics, uh, which is just uh, f- phenomenal to to have that kind of front and center uh, instead right. of as one of the features of it's like this is you know like yeah i do i think you're right like a lot of them kind of have like your your mundane self and then your your magical self and they're they're more separate other than you know like the responsibilities of managing both but right yeah this sounds like they're much more intertwined as like what is your identity yeah and and like literal self-discovery it's like a literal interpretation of the the core trope of the magical girl genre which is really cool yeah oh i'm excited Ryan's all tingly. Uh, no, seriously. I'm He's like, like gripping, I wish, gripping my tea. I like, wish yes, people could like one. see like his face is like, like the biggest, but like, oh, Ryan is so excited right now. Oh, I'm so, I'm so excited. All right. Um, so, so what do characters then uh, do exactly in this game? We kind of, when we were taking notes for this, we summed it up in three, like, uh, very pithy statements the characters <laughs> do the things high schools do and then they fight some monsters and then they remember dramatic things from their past life uh and then i would add you have to, and then having to reconcile those three those three things yeah um, so that's essentially you have crushes on people uh you try to pass tests and then someone tries to like steal the soul of your best friend and you have to stop them Oh, and then you there. remember that you were mm-hmm. actually the queen of a giant kingdom of unicorns. Like, that's so this it. sounds like high school. Yeah, <laughs> that was my experience. Like this, yeah, great, <laughs> very relatable. <laughs> I love that. So we we kind of touched on it a little bit in that last question, but what do you think makes Alchemistresses unique from other magical girl games? So. Uh, I think, yeah, we talked about, I think we put a lot of emphasis on that memory 
and the like past self, present self. That also comes from me watching Sailor Moon and being like, I want more Moon Kingdom. Like, yeah. what is up with that? <laughs> what yeah, is Ryan up with over here? I'm sorry, Neo I Queen? Like, see this. Like, how does this lore? Like, oh, here's a little taste of the past lore. Enjoy your little tiny as appetizer <laughs> as, as a, a treat. treat. But we want, well, we'll keep everything behind this giant curtain over here. Don't worry about it. It's there, but what you happened? can't see it. No, so that's like, <laughs> A lot of it is focusing on like reconciling those kinds of worlds. We have a really uh, fun transformation mechanic that we'll get to um, where if you're playing physically, you physically flip your sheet over, which I know games do. Uh, but the GM, <laughs> you have to say your transformation phrase and do a pose before the GM allows you to switch your oh. character sheet over. <laughs> I love it. Um, then something super dorky, because I'm like a game designer, like... I, I don't like the word formalism, but I really like rules and systems. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think we have a really interesting way to like, uh, it's called a resolve tracker. It's just how you stay in or out of scenes, which I think is interesting. Uh, and the last thing is that with this game, we've also written a really elaborate episode guide. Mm. Um, so the game is designed to take place over one season of of an anime. And it was kind of to fill a space that, I had in my life for a campaign that I knew would end in a reasonable amount of time Mm. Um, because we play weekly Friday games and doing one shots every time is tiring because you have to come up with new characters and get emotionally invested, but we don't want an ongoing campaign. So we're like, oh, something that's like 10 sessions, which is what this is. And we have a full episode guide being like, this is episode one and you can follow it or not, but it, it kind of maps up the structure of a magical girl game. Each character, like each magical girl gets their own feature episode, um, there's a guide to like how to do a filler episode in a beach or sauna or, uh, you know, there's a filler episode guide. Um, mm. That's amazing because so- those are super important. Like, yeah, in, in uh, that genre in general. <laughs> and, you know, like that whole like we go visit grandma's house. Like <laughs> there is X amount of fan service when we're at the at the at the hot spring. Yeah, you know, absolutely. like. Um, so we put a lot of effort into that and kind of helping people who may not have as much experience GMing, but are really passionate about magical girls, even giving them guides like, oh, it might be good to ask players like a question here about what is something their past life self, uh, in their past life self they're afraid of. And then you can incorporate it into the villain in this way in this episode. So that kind Mm. of stuff. Mm. That's really cool. I like that. Absolutely. All right. So uh, before we get into character creation, we've got a couple things left to just talk about uh, so we can uh, do a little bit of an info dump here. Uh, <laughs> we like to talk about the history of the game. Um, and I, uh, from what I understand, this game's been in development for quite a while. So um, when did you start developing uh, this game and, and what what drew you to to start developing it? So it started because time is weird sometime eight to ten years ago Mm. um it's it's been like long enough that uh it's kind of a mystery and it is actually the first game i tabletop role play game i ever started designing um so it was before i have a master's degree in game design it's before i touched that it's before i became a game designer um i was just like this is a genre that i am passionate about that i think has all these things to say and like 10 years ago it was harder to find it was harder to find games that did that. Uh, and I was like, I want to do this. And I had played like one session of Fate. And uh, okay. just the start of Fate where you tie all your characters to other characters. I was like, every game should do this. And this is how <laughs> high school crushes, like this is how I have the most engaging high school crushes. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's how it started. It was just this idea that this genre had so much to give to games. And I wanted, also I wanted to have places where you could role play embarrassing crushes more um oh absolutely which is essentially my my go-to and then we've been working on it um so there's a third designer who is just like a really good friend of mine um and uh, as michael marcott and i have just been like working on it we've lived in different cities but every time we get together at christmas we spend time on it and every time we would do things and then i'm gonna pass to dora because she's we started dating she started living with me and then by proxy had made so many design calls on this game that she, she was like now on the design team because I would be like, <laughs> what do you think about this? What do you think about this? She ran the game probably a half dozen times. Mm. And I was like, OK, now you have done as much design work as anyone else. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't think I have anything to add to that. It's <laughs> an accurate description. <laughs> well, I was in the, the blaster idea about the, the things. <laughs> she is like, anyway, I'm going to just spend a tiny amount of time just praising Dora. Like, she's so smart in this genre, especially the kissing girls, having crushes, being embarrassed at high school genre. <laughs> just everything she says is so smart. And so it would have been a loss to not have her help. I also just now, appreciate the idea that you just were like, my girlfriend is really good at kissing girls. Like, <laughs> I just you. need to pause for a moment and just talk about that. Ladies, sorry, I'm taken. <laughs> it was just yeah. so wholesome. <laughs> um, our first game, actually, the first game project that we worked on together was uh, a game called Denial and Yearning that we did for Z Jam last year, which was is about, um, it came out about a, heated argument we had about romance novel tropes um <laughs> I, I love romance novels uh, and I, allison read one with me and allison I, I think it's fair to say enjoys romance novels but not on the same to the same degree that i do um sure. and i we had a we just disagreed a lot about the book i really loved it allison was like it's fine but like here's five things i don't like about it and we just got into the like like heated arguments where we were diagramming <laughs> romance novel structure <laughs> and we made a game about it. Um, Amazing. So, and that same know-how is it became perhaps alchemist. Don't worry. I love that. I love that. That like, I guess I've had moments like that with friends too, where it's like, no, no, like, let me, let me show you what, <laughs> what I mean and why I'm right. And like, I mm -hmm. love that games come out of that that's so good just just get out the whiteboard and right <laughs> let me tell you <laughs> uh so when is the crowdfunding campaign starting then for this one it will be starting we had to push it back uh two weeks it was going to start on june 1st and it's starting on june 14th um and so i don't know when this is coming out could be running it'll, now it'll could be, be running shortly right after the second episode of the series releases uh it should be starting up um yeah so this I will can, release just... on the 6th and <gasps> then the so it'll be the 6th, 6th the 13th, and the 13th and the, and the 20th. 20th perfect so we'll yeah. cover so, your whole kit we got we yeah. got it <laughs> follow us so, beforehand kickstarter loves that <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah we'll we'll have a link to the kickstarter in the show notes for sure um, so definitely check that out. But yeah, I, after the uh, f the second episode, which is after all of our character creation is done, you'll be able to check out the campaign live uh, the following day. Perfect timing. Yeah, that's nice. Nailed it. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, we did it during the gayest month. Well, right, obviously. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> Before we jump in and do our actual character creation part, we like to just make sure that everybody is on the same page and can follow along. So uh, can you just give us a rundown of like basic terms and concepts that we're going to need to know to follow along? Uh, yes, perfect. So there's not a lot of like very specific language to this and probably nothing that will come up that we won't really cover in the character creation. Mm -hmm. uh, but the three big things um, are convictions so these are what the word we use to describe the guiding principles and motivations of your character. Uh, there is your character's resolve, which is their will to stay in a conflict. Um, and there are alchemy points, which we might not even really touch on, but they're a resource that you can get bonuses in certain contexts in the game. Um, and you will see this on your character sheet, but it would only really happen in play. But you'll see that there's a spot for conditions, which are temporary negative states that uh, impact your character's ability to do something so okay. those are kind of the basics perfect are Very we cool. ready to start this uh, ryan ryan are you prepared I, are you emotionally I, prepared I, for what's about to happen i don't know if i can prepare myself enough I, for how, uh, how excited i am for this um you just like you're like glowing right now i just like i i don't, I, think, I don't think i've ever seen you like this excited like, like let me like add, vibrating <laughs> <laughs> just like going into the fifth dimension here uh our, our, uh i'm so i've been ready since we started talking to to make some people are we ready to make some people let's do it let's make some people right so we're gonna start uh the first thing we're gonna start is with some not just safety mechanics but also like what to guide us in the direction of things we want to see so we're not only going to talk about things that we want to do safety mechanics with but we want to see like where you want to go what what you're mm -hmm. excited about and we're gonna have dora lead this bit because she's a pro 
I'm not. I'm not a pro for the record. I'm by definition <laughs> an amateur. Um, but well, uh, but by the time this game comes out, that's you true, will be because people are paying you for this game. I am a pro so, at that point. There you go. There you go. By the yeah. time this comes out. <laughs> 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 so something that is you know of course every table has their approach for this but um what we traditionally use for sessions is the lines and veil format which a lot of people are probably familiar with uh a line is something that we really don't want to be included in the the, the story at all uh not not referred to not sort of in the background a veil is something that is fine but we do not want to focus on it we don't want to portray it closely Maybe it can sort of happen, but we definitely aren't going to zoom a camera in on it at all. Um, mm -hmm. So we can talk by just uh, by talking about lines and veils, um, and you know, feel free to talk, you know, shout things out in, in chat, um, or mm -hmm. you know, just to just to say them. Or if uh, I'm looking at the world building tab of the uh, the digital character sheet, you can also feel free to put things in directly there. And obviously, mm -hmm. you know, we are on a podcast, like we're like, we've come together to do this. So I think that we're, we're all going to be like, you know, generally pretty cautious and conscious of each other, but we also right. haven't yeah. played before. So it's also sure. important to check in. Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I know, I know like my, my general lines and veils are, uh, you know, being decent and right. like yeah like anything is, that a good person would do is okay <laughs> yeah i'm down um, with that like so yeah. so so none of the none of the big isms uh you know uh like uh uh one of one of my big personal one is like uh uh child endangerment mm -hmm. is like uh like like young young child endangerment i know that you play high schoolers and you're probably going to be in danger at points <laughs> as high schoolers and that's just the name of the game and that's fine but like you know younger children yeah. um being in danger um yeah. is usually uh one of my lines yeah well and i think that there's a specific um there's something specific about adventurers like facing danger or sort of you know like you know whatever somebody being people around who chose to face danger yeah. versus yeah. people who did not yeah right yeah, so that's a good one uh, no sick or sad cats got added at the line. Um, yeah. Is that you, Allison? That's put mm -hmm. you in the spot. Yes, that was me. Why? Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, that's a bad practice for safety mechanics. That's... By the way, no, that's okay example. because I was similarly like, please don't hurt puppies. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we have we have uh, I I put just big isms down in veils, and I think yeah. you know just to spell that out: racism, um, homophobia. Uh, mm. you know that any other big ones you want to yeah, call out there. uh yeah sexism, sexism uh yeah. and uh all, all sorts of capitalism colonialism Cap yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we could have capitalism as an enemy um d oh, oh, you know what d says this is because of a bias in my playtest group but you are gonna have to define a great evil and like it has been capitalism more times than it has been anything else <laughs> oh like, yeah it, I it mean, happens if, on our show a lot too. We had a run of like five months worth of stuff where like the big bad was capitalism. It's so. true. I it's, mean, the big bad there. is objectively capitalism, for right? All. For sure. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Trying to think if I have any. I don't. I like especially within the genre. Like knowing what the genre is, it's like I don't have to absolutely you know worry about like body horror and you know that yeah. kind of stuff. Right. Um, yeah, we can yeah but again, don't tell me down. what sound it makes. Like, I don't yeah. want to, like, we can talk oh, about yeah. it, but don't that's, tell me how it sounds. Yeah, <laughs> I'm putting body horror down as a veil. And one of the mm -hmm. things we do when we play games is we keep this world building tab open at all times so anyone can go in and add to their lines or veils uh, throughout the whole process. Like, maybe if we decide that the genre of the past world is gothic horror, there are more things we want to more uh, explicitly sure. call out. Yeah, yep. mm -hmm. um, I Great do think point. that's a good Eldritch point horror, for probably. games in general too. Is that, dear listeners, lines and veils you can express them anytime, not just in your session zero. If something yeah. bothers you and it comes up, as I've said before too, like sometimes you're just having a day and you come in and you're like, this thing happened at work and I don't want to talk yep. about it. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. so, yeah. So we did a session where one of our cats had been diagnosed with cancer, and that that session was like particularly hard in some ways, and we we're just like. Yeah, you have to be emotionally. It's a day, like 
things right, can like change Right, like, I don't want to talk about that today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like, last week, cancer would have been fine. This week, it's not. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, so you can define lines and veils at any point. And I, like, thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I think it's also good, like, as a GM, I, I usually also play with the X card. Um, or, you know, you can also use mm-hmm. similar frameworks that allow... Mm-hmm. Just that encourage on the fly conversation mm-hmm. or like for people to set their boundaries as you go because new stuff is, is going to come. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So with that in mind, we can go back and add to that list at uh, any time. We also like to take a moment to like just highlight things that we would want to see in a session. Obviously, we're going to play a session, but these could be things in backstory, things that like, you know, you're going to point your character arcs towards. I want to mm-hmm. see... Uh, one sec. Please. Is that okay? Uh, you can see the way we do it often on Zoom is you can actually do an X reaction. Wait, what? So if you can see on my screen there. <gasps> How do you do uh, that? Or, There's a reaction. Um, another oh. thing, yeah, is if the content is not X carded, but you want to slow down, we usually do a little turtle. Um, oh my gosh. So that's just something we can use uh, as a safety tool. Yeah, it's exciting, isn't it? Oh, yeah. that button's been down too. there forever. And like I did not. And I always play my games over. Oh, this is so good to know. So oh, uh, yeah, during the pandemic, the co-op I work with has done a lot of work with like digital and online safety tools. We usually mm-hmm. do through Discord, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah. works just as well here. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Go ahead. So for those that are uh, that do play over Zoom a lot, uh, and I'm not sure, I know Microsoft Teams has this as well. I don't know how many people are RP role playing over Teams. It feels more like <laughs> no more one. of a business thing. Bless right? you, though. But seriously, <laughs> if you are, um, there, if you go to the reactions button uh, on the bar at the bottom of the the actual video window, uh, you can go and there's uh, a few basic reactions. There's like six basic reactions and then the ellipses and you can just search for X and then the X will pop up and there's also a green check mark on there um, and a few other things that you you could probably easily use for whatever your group wants. Mm -hmm. Um, And once you use it, it's in the frequently used box and then you can just reuse it pretty easily. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Thank you for that. I did not know that was there. Yeah, Never it's really it. cool. I, so Allison and I actually met doing, uh, I was playing games that were not formally soft chaos, like run games, but just for, you know, Allison and her friends who include all the soft chaos running games <laughs> online. And one of the things where I was, I was just like immediately super impressed by how like thorough and thought out their approach to online safety tools was. So, you know, sure. Yeah, that. that's a, a big deal for a, a lot of people. Like, I know that that's I've resisted generally playing with people I don't know, because right. especially online, because it's like, you don't know what you're getting into. So it's super important. Mm-hmm. So having talked about safety on the on the other side, what, what are things that we really like, really want to see or delighted to see? Um, I'm going to start us off by putting school dances. So you need oh. a dance. School dances are good. I also would like shopping. Oh my god, that's Thank super you. important okay. to me in okay, games. Yep. <laughs> oh, we never had a shopping scene in our current we game. We did. There yeah. has to Do you be. remember when they were buying outfits for that dance? There was like a oh, fashion there was. montage. There was. Oh, yeah. fashion montage related the to the dance. It all goes yeah. together. You need a prom dress. You need a prom dress. How are you going to get it if you don't go shopping? <laughs> mm-hmm. And if you go shopping, you have to have a fashion montage, <laughs> right? I'm gonna. I feel like I'm gonna turn the rest over to Ryan. Gosh, what do you like want to e- see? Everything. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. Give me, give me, give me. Um, <laughs> just, just magical girl nonsense. Um, yes. Right. Okay, so that's the game. But like, what? <laughs> <laughs> do we want like at least one scene where someone's running with toast in their mouth? Like, what? That's yeah. mine. Right. I'll put that in for in Allison. Mouth. Thank you. <laughs> um. I feel gosh. like um uh. I would like at least one talking animal that definitely has better plans and ideas than the humans around them. You're in luck. Like more responsible than. <laughs> responsible talking animals. I would animals. like responsible yeah. animals. That might, be, uh, <laughs> that might be mechanically required. Okay. Yep. So, well, Amazing. it doesn't have to be an animal, but. Mm. Yes, we will. We will reach that phase of character creation. <laughs> yes. I don't know very much at all about the magical genre other than what I have learned from Ryan over the years, but <laughs> yep. I feel like that's important. That's a very that's important element. Part. Absolutely. And I think this is it. Like, we don't have to have strong ideas now. Uh, yeah. This is just to give us as the, like, 
in the case of that there was a GM, I would give the GM an idea of how to guide and direct. But yeah. uh, you will get more specific inspiration shortly. That's perfect. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, from there, let's let's go into the present. So the one thing we wanted to bring up is that every single person has a different opinion on the order in which you should do this character creation. Because we have to make the past world, the present world, the past self and the present self. Mm-hmm. And we're like, okay, we're just going to play test it a bunch and we'll figure out like what most people want to do. Not possible. Everyone has a very different, uh, <laughs> passionate, d- passionate opinion. And they are passionate that their opinion is the right opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what <laughs> we have it presented in a certain order in the rule book that we as the designers are passionate about. Um, but this isn't a question that I'll open with. Um, you can start, the two ways we do it is by starting with your present day self and your high school shenanigans. Uh, and that will ground most of the characters like in that character. That will be the mm-hmm. thing that inspires uh, inspires things about your past self. Like if your present mm-hmm. self has a fear of water, maybe you would like build that into your past self. Okay. Uh, and the other way to start is we don't start with the past self, but we start with the past world. Um, okay. So if either of those is more interesting for you to start with or easier, right? Uh, we recommend people with uh, people who like might be less experienced start with the present self because it it eases you into that creation process. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you have a lot of wild ideas, you might want to start with the past world. I, I personally like the idea of starting with the present because it, it really? feels very I was thematic. guessing you would go the other way. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Well, because it was. Uh, I thought you'd want to build a world first. I mean, I yes. I prefer. I feel like I want to do present self first. Yeah, I think present okay. self first makes sense because it it feels thematic with the game, uh, where you're trying to discover the past after living through the present. Perfect. Uh, as the designer, I agree with you. <laughs> Write that down. Play test your feedback. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> that is a check in the Allison column. <laughs> yeah, Alan's right. No. Um, so should I shall I read the introduction? Yeah, or do you want to? OK, so I'm just going to read from the rules. This is great to learn. But Alchemistresses is a collaborative storytelling role playing game. You're going to be everyday teens going to high school and dealing with all the shenanigans that ensue. But there is something special about you. You are the reincarnations of very powerful, magical beings. You are the mistress of one of the five elements. These uh, the memories of this former life have been lost to you, and it will take time, maybe even the entire season of an anime, to remember exactly who you were then and what that means for who you are now. So we've gone over some of these are like this is about magic and fantasy. We've already touched on all of mm-hmm. that. Uh, the thing, the really thing, the important thing we want to note is that magical girl is a job description, not a gender. Mm -hmm. Uh, So in your past life, you held the title mistress of your element. So you'll be referred to as the mistress of fire or the mistress of water. But this doesn't mean that you have to identify in any particular way in regards to gender or use any particular pronouns. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, your past life and your present life can have different gender identities, different orientations and even different bodies. And that is part of what we can explore through that self-discovery, the past and present world. But we like saying that because we don't all have to be 14 year old girls, nice. uh, which is that's good to um, know, because that was like, I mean, definitely I operated under that assumption. I will. <laughs> that is the genre. We, 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 right. we like expanding the genre, yeah. except that what is it? Cute Defender Earth Force. There's one one really popular magical boy anime. Mm hmm. So the general premise, and it's a little vague because we're going to flesh it out, is that in the past world, there was a great evil and a great battle. Exactly what happened has been lost to time, but both the evil and the mistresses of the elements who confronted it vanished from the world (gasps) until today. (laughs) No one knows why, but magic has shown itself in the world again, and both the great evil and the mistresses of the elements have begun to reawaken. So that's the setting we're at in the present day world. Mm -hmm. Um, And we will start with our present our present selves. So uh, you have the beautiful layout, though we're probably going to just fill in the spreadsheet. And we just like look at the layout and picture that everything we do is this beautiful. And then we can go to the Excel spreadsheet. Right. <laughs> um, but there's a tab called past. And the first thing we have to do is we have to decide what element you want to be. Oh, sorry. We're in present. Starting in present. But you still have to decide what element you want to be the mistress of. And mm. uh 
we will, of course, allow you two to decide first. And we will take the <laughs> remaining elements um, from water, fire, earth, and air. Ryan is water and I'm fire. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, After which like means... four years of doing this, we're like, we can just fill out each other's characters. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, so that would mean, uh, according to traditional color coding, uh, water will be the blue one and fire will be the red one. D, mm -hmm. are you earth? Is that how this goes? Yeah. I mean, do we want to go w with According to our type? tradition, I'm air, you're earth. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Uh, and you can put your the player name and pronouns in the top there. Um, and just to get you thinking early about it, this will come up in the rules and we'll probably fill it in last, but you will have to have a transformation for like, phrase. And we do encourage bad elemental puns uh, if you want to like get that going in the back of your mind while we start. Oh, boy. <laughs> so first, that's the first step easiest step we now mm -hmm. have elements and you can kind of use this if you want to inspire uh aspects even of your present day self in the present day you are regular school kids you're just trying to make it through your days the genre is slice of life anime though as i said if we want to break or high it we can interpret that a little more loosely mm -hmm. and play during when you're in your present day self often follows your mundane exploits at high school mm -hmm. so this is the person you are every day the person you've been since you were born Inside you, however, is awakening the spirit of a magical being. So there are some of the basics, your name and your pronouns. It's top of the character sheet, but I always like going back to this at the end, too, to see if there's anything from the character creation that like inspires mm. a name. Yeah, also, don't I'm just think, bad at names. So I think yeah, I don't think I can come up with a name first Yeah, uh, um, for most of my characters. but And yeah. then all of the characters in their present day form are aged 14 to 18 and are in high school. Uh, so that's a good place to start because as... I know as an old person in my 30s, a year different doesn't seem like a big deal. But are you a senior or a junior or a freshman? I was going to say, I think I want to be 15 because I want to be not quite able to drive yet. Oh, very good. Ooh. Strong choice. I'm I inspired like that. by that. I'm going to go. I'm going to go 15 as well. Yes. Like a I'll, sophomore stick, I'll stick here. with that too. So, uh, you know. Like I'm going to go 14. Ooh, a baby. Ooh. Her little frosh. <laughs> And I'm hanging out with the cool older kids, I'm One sure. One interesting thing for Americans listening to this is that I've played tested this with a lot of Amer of Canadians. And there's always this conversation where they're like, okay, so it's like freshman is younger than junior? That doesn't make any sense. It's just like <laughs> a little cultural thing you don't think about. You're fresh. Oh, and then like a senior is obviously the oldest. And so a junior is just under that. Right. It's okay. You Canadians, know, unlike take Girl note. Scouts, where junior is actually the third level after yeah. you. Yeah. That brownie one is misleading. we uh we also like we only remember sophomore second because of the term sophomore album it's just it's not yes. they're not words we use like to refer to high schools right so mm -hmm. when i'm trying to remember I'm like a sophomore album is their second album so that means yeah um <laughs> but it's been fun for d to mm -hmm. get used to this um Again, transformation phrase. We'll come back to it at the end, but I like people thinking about it at the beginning. It's a dramatic phrase that you must utter and then must do a pose before you transform into your alchemistress. Elemental puns are encouraged. Uh, you don't know your transformation phrase actually at the start of the game, but it will come to you and you'll know mm. when it does. Uh, and we're going to have Dora... Uh, just, you know, Dora's middle name is D, so if I keep calling her D, that's why. Uh, we're going to have Dora give you an example of what a transformation phrase might look like. I'm going to blow you away. Very good. There you go. Very oh, good. you also, it's very important. You also do the pose. So for that character, Maddie, it's, it's that you have to turn to the side and blow a kiss, right? Oh, very good. <laughs> uh, Perfect. Uh, yeah, thank you for, we will have to describe our dramatic poses as they, again, not <laughs> as uh I do feel like mine friendly. needs to involve like jazz hands. Oh, please. Bring, oh, bring the jazz. Right. That just feels like fire. <laughs> just jazz. Oh, that is good. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite things about having run this like dozens of times is just this collection of bad elemental pun transformation. <laughs> I have I just have like a bank of them. Yeah, I know. I was like, Ryan's going to be really excited about that. Too. Like as if you're not already about the rest of it. But you were like, puns are encouraged. And Ryan's like, I can't handle any more excitement today. <laughs> So we're gonna, gonna the thing. Go lay down. Oh, wow. 
<laughs> Ryan is uh, daintily fanning himself just like this. Um, so the convictions, um, deal. have you, we'll like take turns running through them if that's cool with you. But these are, like I said before, they're just the things that motivate your characters. Um, if we want to talk about, they give you boosts mechanically through the game, but we won't even talk about that during creation because uh, this is a narrative first, mechanical second uh, type of creation. So I will start. Your character has a personal goal, and this is what drives you in your daily life. It is a lifelong dream, or because you're high school students, at the very least, like a medium term goal mm -hmm. that drives your character in their daily life. It can feel mm. a, a medium term goal that feels like a lifelong goal because you're 14. Because the idea um, of turning 20 is like in a million years. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so it can be abstract, like prove myself or to be the best, or it can be like concretely attainable, like get a date to prom or got to catch them all is uh, one of my favorites. <laughs> um, but something that you might be able to achieve, but won't achieve too easily in the course of this season that is going to happen. And so we use prom because that's usually like a year end thing. It would be very impressive if uh, a freshman got a date to prom, probably. To like see your prom that would be a big deal um yeah. so the next conviction for your present day self is your greatest fear um just the thing that you're most afraid of i can be very specific like spiders or more abstract um like letting others down the character i'm playing right now for play testing um her fear is getting stuck in this town right so that's another example that maybe mm. is somewhere between those two and of course i think that's maybe a good example of all of these can be used sort of introduce things or questions into the setting because it tells you a lot about this town if you're afraid of getting stuck there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the last one, and this one we will do after we've done the other two. Uh, so the way I would do this is we do those first two and then we kind of give general introductions of who we are. And then this last one is a conviction called they are important to you now. So this is a relationship important to your present day identity. And it will be with one of the other players in the game. So one of the other mistresses. Mm. It's going to be decided in collaboration with them, but it doesn't have to be symmetrical. Okay. For example, both players could write that the other is their best friend. Or one could write, so-and-so is my best friend. And the other could write, I'm madly in love with them, but I'm afraid to tell them because we're best friends. And mm. so you can have uh, asymmetric relationships or symmetric. Um, and so I think coming up with those first two and then telling them to everyone and being like, oh, is there any pair here that we think is an interesting pair of people to put together? Okay. Um, and you will get tied to someone else later in the game, so this won't be your only chance at that kind of relationship. Hmm. So, yeah, I guess, shall we give a minute to think about yeah. what we want for goals and convictions? Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm thinking of keeping it uh, fairly general because we haven't come up with the the actual uh, setting yet. Um, and I've got I've got ideas. Um, tell course. us, tell us your ideas. <laughs> I'll save, I'll save those for that portion. Um, uh, but I think my personal goal, uh, will have something to do with swimming, mm. uh, since I'm the, the mistress of water and it has to be something like, um, fine, finally taking, uh, first place at state. Or yeah. That's what like I was going to say, like state championship. Yeah. Obviously in the butterfly, because that sounds like the most magical girl. Of oh, my God. It's <gasps> so magical girl. So. <laughs> that is the best. We love a jock. Can I just say a jock is a very good magical girl. <laughs> the one of our one of our playtest teams is like the second the junior varsity badminton team or something. Second oh, string. I love the junior. Badminton second team. string of the badminton team. They're like, <laughs> it's so good. Uh, beautiful. Mm. Uh, another, and another thing to think about is thinking in terms of like high school stereotypes. Yeah. Cause I'm probably going to go probably with something. This is my thought for air, something flighty and artisty. Mm. Um, so that's probably where I'm leaning. Uh, I, my, I think my personal goal will be to create something that makes others feel my personal goal i should probably make it a little more to create something amazing that makes other people feel <laughs> i think i want to be the lead in the school play oh, oh my, god. my god that's so good 
And he's just like, I would kiss all of them. Right. <laughs> Get um, several dates to prom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picturing uh, the just like Earth is making me think about being very like grounded, very like practical. And um, so I think that mine is going to be about I, I, I want I picture myself like working, having a job and um, so I'm going to have my goal be something a little less practical, which is that I'm trying to save enough money to take a trip to Europe uh, after Ooh. I graduate. Oh, nice. Okay, beautiful. Oh, these are so good. Mm-hmm. Um, and just as like a mechanically, you would get a slight bonus to, to checks, which we'll maybe talk about or like roles, if they are in service of these goals. So that's how it would work in terms of the game. Nice. Um. I think I have a great fear. Does anyone have theirs ready yet? I don't. So please tell us. Uh, also, the puns are also encouraged here if you want. But I think um, uh, I think the mistress of airs in her present day form, her biggest fear is to be tied down by her family. Mm. So she wants to. I'm I'm kind of picturing that she has a. Uh, yeah, maybe a less artsy family, a more uh, traditional, traditional occupation, uh, kind of encouraging family. So she doesn't want to be stopped by that. All right. Um, for mine, I'm going to go a little against uh, type here. Uh, my greatest fear is a deep water where you can't see the bottom. <gasps> oh, I like that. Yeah. It's I always, I choice. really like those kinds of strong choices um i am going to take um following in my sister's footsteps and quote falling in bad crowd Mm. i feel like i'm gonna go with not being noticed (gasps) oh i love that that feels very fiery Yeah. yeah um so in terms of our pair Oh, I was thinking we could do the bios first. I forgot. Let's about do that. the bios. Sure. <laughs> Sorry. There's one last thing. And I have started the sentence for you. It can be as short as three words. But if you look down on the sheet, there's a part that says home life, school life, social life. Mm. Uh, and you complete the sentence. So if I were to read directly from the rules, um, you can fill these out however you like in order to flesh out your character's motivations, personalities, and situations. They can be really short, like at home, I am misunderstood, right? So you could even do them with one word, or it can be like at home, I'm often alone because my dad is gone and my mom works late, right? So mm. you can make it a full sentence if you want. I'm usually a one, I'm a one word kind of gal, uh, but I know that mm. there are people who appreciate that whole sentence. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say at home, I am precocious. <laughs> if I spell it right, hopefully. I feel like you've made fire characters before. <laughs> what? I feel like I'm what? a Sagittarius. <laughs> <laughs> Except also, I'm like right on the edge, so I'm also kind of Scorpio. Yeah, I'm a Gemini, she says, making this beautiful mistress of air. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever like made not a fire character. Now that I'm thinking. No, actually, I do a lot of Earth characters, too, because they're, they're the nerds, usually, so... <laughs> so does anyone have their at home yeah my i got for my home life uh at home i am comfortable and relaxed at home i am struggling to live up to my parents expectations Ooh. and at home i am constantly frustrated so the next one is at school i am at school i am getting through by keeping my head down uh at school i am often found hanging out with the stoners I'm going to say, at school, I am eccentric. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, for me, at school, I am cautious and guarded. Um, Ryan and I are just making ourselves now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they stopped did. even pretending that we're like. <laughs> <laughs> just lean fully into our nonsense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. You get to Then you get to make high school what you wanted it to be. So that's right. Awesome. Uh-huh. Oh, right. that is so true. All right. And last, the social life. Uh, mine is with my friends. I am aware I'm always letting them down by prioritizing something else. <sighs> oh, wow. Uh, con- con- contrastingly, with my friends, I'm always joyous and outgoing. It's good because I think Dora and I also are opposites in a lot of ways. So, 
Okay, for me, uh, with my friends, I am a provider of comfort and support, leaving little room for self-care. I'm going to say, with my friends, I am passionate but competitive. Yeah. Good. (laughs) Okay, I love this. Is anyone seeing any pairs of characters that they like together? I mean, there's like, there's two very fair pairs in my mind. And the question is, we do we... Me too, but I'm not saying them. We should see. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and now I feel like I'm being quizzed. Like, <laughs> which ones are the right ones? <laughs> it's just, I think, yeah, we'll see. There are no right, there are no right answers in character creation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or we can just let Dora go with what... <laughs> Yeah, I I'm mean, I feel like you should. This process. Well, no. so the <laughs> yeah, the what I was going to say is that we have two artists, and then we have two sort of like more reserved people. Mm-hmm. Um, and the question is like, do we want yeah. do we want to pair the types, or do we want to pair against type? Right? Like, do we want it to be two sort of like passionate artists paired with people who are more down to earth? May I say with I? I also like noticed that I really think I like uh, fire and earth, water and air, um, mm. because yeah. I think there are like these passionate, eccentric, outgoing artists and these people that um, could like. Uh... So I, I see air and water, and Ryan, you can let me know. Like I could Absolutely. see air taking advantage of that, like caring mm. support, mm-hmm. and I could see fire and earth being competitive in in ways right i also like yeah i like the fire and earth and the aspect of like okay like you have these like very strong goals of like i'm i'm working i'm making money and i'm like i want to be in the play and you're like acting is not a job like that's you're never gonna (laughs) do you know how how few people make it in hollywood right you know like (laughs) exactly exactly and i just really like that that dynamic of like okay like you need to have fun and i need to like have less fun maybe (laughs) <laughs> Ooh, everyone has something to learn Ooh. um so we should probably name our characters before we do this because we have to fill in yes they are important to you but now you have a bit of an idea uh i always like i'm very bad at names too it's like google baby name generators <laughs> oh i have right here on my desk two baby name books like from when oh. i was naming my kids but i've kept them for characters i actually think though i I came up with a name right away, Ryan. Please mark it on your calendar. Oh. <sighs> um, I'm not good at last names, but I feel like for a first name, I want Ember. Oh, Ooh, love that. That is good. It's like Amber, That's but my parents were hippies. <laughs> <laughs> In honor of the Kickstarter campaign for this game, I'm going to name myself June. Oh, I love mm. it. Uh, I'm going to go like hammer, ha- like hit the nail right on the head and i'm gonna go with the name sky oh that's good mm-hmm. but like with an e of course obviously of course <laughs> now the question is did your parents put that e there or do you just spell it that way at school oh only at school right <laughs> it, it's a better signature on the pa- like on the yeah. painting it just looks oh right God. it's like more <laughs> yeah if she could have she would have been the person who would like added an accent somewhere Mm-hmm. But it just it just didn't work. Yeah, with the only one like vowel really, like over the Y. <laughs> over the mm. Y. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so everybody's kind of uh, hopping on the uh, name brand uh, sort oh, of. Oh, Ryan. So oh. I went with River. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. good. I-, I like the River and Sky duo. I'm into mm. it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but now the fun part. Yeah. How do these pairs come together? Mm-hmm. I the big thing I think for my character is that she is a year younger than everyone. Mm-hmm. So I think her ties to like, yeah. Why why would River hang out with a what do you call a, a freshman, a, a <laughs> sad little young, a, a first year high schooler, puppy eyed yeah. freshman, a baby. <laughs> bushy-tailed, bright-eyed, and ready to make enough art to change the world. hmm Can I offer a suggestion? Please. I feel like maybe you were, like, next-door neighbors growing up. I was literally thinking, thinking the yes! same thing. Yes! <laughs> Perfect. Uh, we're so I good at this, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> there's, like, this, um... There's this feeling of obligation of support and 
from the social life, right? That yeah. I feel like you probably are like, mm-hmm. oh, I definitely have to take care of my next door neighbor. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, my my brain is churning. What what sort of extra complexity can I throw on this? Yeah. Um. Uh. Because we would have known each other our whole lives, basically, right? Yeah. So there could uh, be possibly. some fun. Um. I want to say that, like, I I've always kind of uh been like the the protector role like because you were you were younger but just barely um and uh so i always kind of looked out for you but like um i think i think river's got a secret crush on sky yeah if that's obviously very into it i don't feel like we needed to even write that down (laughs) everyone has a secret crush on everyone uh Uh how about i'm gonna say i think there's probably like some something that happened that Sky did that was super like snuck in past curfew and that's not super bad or like uh, stole something but not too evil she's just mischievous and River like protected her when that happened I feel like yeah. maybe like Halloween you like toilet paper at somebody's house and like oh. River covered for you yes I'm totally into that with, like very <laughs> colorful toilet like those like right um, yeah mm-hmm. what is art <laughs> <laughs> It's performance it's art. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not just the toilet paper itself. It's who was toilet papered. It tells a story. <laughs> the eleven-year-old child in a little beret. <laughs> oh, I bet. I bet. Sky wears a beret all the time. Oh, absolutely. Oh, oh that's a. That, you're just impossible. I only shop at thrift stores. <laughs> and like the cool ones, not like the ones everyone knows about. Right. Co- um. How are Earth and Fire feeling? It's interesting is we we are much more contrasting. Mm-hmm. I I like I like how you brought up earlier Earth being like some sort of a bearer of responsibility, like a reality check, like Earth being a reality check for Fire. Yeah. Or um, June being a reality check for Ember in some ways. Uh, so maybe they got they've been like partnered on. You don't even have we have a class called careers in Canada where you learn about like what it's like to have a job. Like it's a oh, high school yeah. class you have to take. What did they call that? I feel like we had one. I was actually going to say that like we both work at like a fast food restaurant or something. And like, yes. you are my manager. Yes. Like even though yes. you're like only slightly older than me. Yeah. Oh my God. I've been working there since I was a freshman. Uh, right. I worked my way out to shift. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's Already. like me, though. Like, I am still in my job from high school. I've been yeah. there for 17 years. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just like, you're just like, gosh, like. I'm like, oh, I, I have be to call home. in on Saturday. Actually, I can't come because I, like, have a thing. So. This is the third <laughs> time this month. <laughs> yeah, I know, but this, like, it's really important. Like, nope. my grandma died, and you're like, she died last month. She, she already <laughs> died. And yeah, that was, that was in your mother's side, and the father's side I'm, was the month before that. I know, but it was, like, really tragic because, like, actually, she wasn't dead. Like, the hospital <laughs> thought she was, but there was, like, a really she, big mix up. No, and so that now is sad. For real, you actually she went is. to her funeral and she wasn't right. dead. Right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> wow, I'm convinced. Take the death. I'm actually going to put it in a play that I'm writing. Uh, okay, now you're... Um, it's, it's like a noise is off, but yeah. uh, even funnier. I, so, like, I, I feel like this is like a... It's like a, lo- it's like a local chain that is... It's just like... Yeah, like, I feel like it's like a family lovely. rest... Like a family diner or something. Yes. Oh, please. Oh, I love yeah. a diner. Mm-hmm. Diner is a fantastic set. Uh, piece for any magical girl uh, story. I'm excited. We will be drinking more coffee than it is advised for 14 and 15 year olds yeah. to be drinking. Mm-hmm. All right. So, do you just check that I didn't miss anything? Um, there are. There is. Resolve. Oh, the stats and the resolve. And okay. Yeah. So you can <laughs> you notice that there's a part on your sheet that says mind, body, spirit. Um, mm-hmm. And because we're on a spreadsheet, it has like every die listed from the d2 to a d20 mm-hmm. so these are the three stats that you roll in the game um and let me pull up the text about them uh and i'll introduce them now and we'll we'll also do them on our magical girl side but you have mind mind represents a character's intellect memory and knowledge 
In their daily lives, a character might roll mind when they need to study for a test, give someone first aid, memorize lines for a school play, or see through a lie. In their magical lives, magic might, uh, mind might be used to see through an illusion, deep code an ancient text, or understand the workings of complex magic. The overachiever, teacher's pet, or hacker might have a hot mind eye. Mm. Do, you to, do you want to take body, Allison, or should I roll right through? Great. Uh, so body's probably the most self-explanatory. It's your physical prowess, your strength, your agility, your toughness. You might roll body to win a badminton match, to impress a cutie with your sweet, sweet dance moves, or to catch the bus after sleeping in. Win the butterfly ma- at state. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that seems like a stat that a, a, a swim, uh, someone who's going to swim meets might want to hide. Uh-huh. Uh, in your magical life, you might use it to dodge a blast of mystical energy, resist poisonous vapors from a strange cauldron, or even just hit something really, really, really hard. So jocks, skaters, or bullies are all like the stereotypes that might have a high body score. And the last is spirit, which is the least, like the, the most different. Right? So spirit is your personality and willpower. Uh, so it's your strength of will, personality, and emotional intelligence. In your daily lives, characters might roll spirit to cheer up a friend who failed a test, put in, put on a moving performance in the school play, or resist being upset by a bully's insults. In the magical lives, you might roll it to charm a unicorn, resist a mind control spell, or even just search your feelings to learn a hard truth. Um, artiste, class clowns, or cheerleaders are people who might have high spirit scores. Uh, spirit and willpower are also how you control magic when you're transformed. Um, so what you'll see, in, if you read the GM guide for this game, um, a lot of the times what will happen is you will say, I want to do a thing, and you will be asked, how do you want to do it? Explain how you want to do it. And then once you do that, there'll be a call about which of these stats it would use to do. Mm. Because you can, yeah, you can do well in a play by having the lines memorized or by being emotional um, or by like having physical presence. So it's kind of, um, it's an approach based style to roles. Mm-hmm. And it, yeah, well, it will incur- it will form the type of play, it will form narratively what you do because you'll be approaching things um, with these stats. And so, yeah, everyone already looked at the numbers, but one will start at a D4, one will start at a D6, and one will start at a D8. And when we were talking before about your convictions helping you, if you're rolling, if you're doing something and it's in service of the conviction, for that roll alone, you get to upgrade the die. Mm. Um, so as you see, like, you can roll a D4, but if it's because I'm trying to win or we'll use River's stats, body as a D8. If I'm in that butterfly competition, I could upgrade it to roll a D10 because it is so important to me. But if I'm just uh, swimming for fun, it would be like a D8. Mm -hmm. Everyone's done that. And the last thing is that your resolve is always at a D8. And that resolve represents, it always starts at a D8. It represents your will to stay in a conflict or situation. Um, And this is a thing that like mechanically I think is fun if I describe like formalist rule stuff. Um, so you are, I'm not going to read the rules. It's not really that important to character creation, but just uh, if you're ever hit and it can be emotional hit or a physical hit, right? You, your resolve can lower because someone called you a mean name or because they punched you in the face. Those mm-hmm. work mechanically the same way. They both lower your will to stay in the situation. So when that happens, you roll on your resolve and if you get a one, you're knocked out of the scene. If not, you lower to a lower die. So then the next time you get smacked in the face or someone tells you that you are, I don't know, unworthy of love. We had a really mean villain that did that a lot. Wow. Um, then it will... <laughs> D is nodding. I was the mean villain and D was one of the characters. <laughs> it was devastating. Um, so then that continues to lower your resolve, which makes it more and more likely that you will be knocked out of a scene, which doesn't mean you die. It doesn't mean anything like that. It just means that you narratively remove yourself from the situation. So. Mm. I think, Allison, maybe it's worth, since we're discussing that, it's worth saying, like, you you always sort of poke fun of your, at yourself about this, where it's like, oh, it's like, I, I'm such a formalist. I just like, like, well, <laughs> but I think it's also about specifically modeling, trying to model the very particular way that combat works in the magical girl genre, where it is very emotional. It's mostly about sort of like overcoming your own, like whatever's holding you back, um, like sort yeah. of overcoming your issue. And then um, it's also about, it leads to a certain kind of stickiness for villains where 
um, like you have to soften them up and then, but then they go out right away. Um, Mm -hmm. like that, you know, that particular way where it's like, there's always, it's always like, you know, this, a sailor scout does an attack and then sailor moon follows up with the finish sheet. Like it, I think it's also very important to trying to get the, 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 both the themes and the rhythms of a magical girl combat. That's when yeah. mechanics really, sh- and why mechanics are so important, and I say this a lot in our episodes, is why you can't run everything in 5e. Right. <laughs> um, because mechanics should encourage that kind of storytelling. Like, the best mechanics in games are ones that help you feel that theme and help work toward those kinds of scenes that you want to have. So it's mm-hmm. like both, you know, like you can be really good at mechanics and and like that kind of stuff in games, but you still have to know the story stuff to really have mechanics at work yeah and i have i just i do joke about it because people like have strong feelings about mechanics mm-hmm. but i think i am really proud of what we've done and how it works mm-hmm. uh, and we'll talk about the spells when we get to the magical girl side but there was a lot of talk about like how to narratively and mechanically balance combat because mm-hmm. if you're doing something more like a 5e it doesn't feel magical girly so no. we had to like yeah. sit with a long time and be like what is fun about magical girl combat like yeah, what, is what the makes it different it? than just hitting something with a sword? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, right. Feelings. Feelings is the... No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so, so I'm curious what everybody chose for uh, their mind, body, and spirit then um, as defined yeah. by their characters. Yeah. Do you want to start us off? Yeah. Uh, so I went with uh, a D8 body, uh, which made sense mm-hmm. if I'm conditioning myself to win... Uh, a swimming competition, uh, especially in the butterfly category. Uh, of course, uh, I'm going to be pretty good at, uh, at the body. But like the second most important thing for my character was that spirit aspect. Right. So mm-hmm. to to try to be there for friends and try to be kind of the rock uh, yeah. and everything. Um, so that's why the D6 and then uh, the D4 naturally fell to mind. Um, but I think that. Uh, it, it's also fitting for River uh, to have uh, to put the priority of, uh, you know, the physical uh, and the emotional above uh, the the intellectual. Yeah. Uh, in, in her life. So, uh, I, yeah, I, I like this uh, this spread of uh, attributes. Mm-hmm. I went with a D8 in spirit because I see myself as like passionate and charismatic. Mm -hmm. Um, I went with a D6 in mind because I feel like I'm, you know, like I have like that emotional intelligence too and, and just the ability to do a lot of things at once. Um, and then body is a D4 because it's just like not really that important. Like, I, (laughs) like I always have a note for gym class, you know, like I'm that kind of person. I do. I feel that. Uh, so my approach was to think about the most important and the least important. Uh, so I really picture Sky as like extremely flighty, kind of probably gullible as well and oblivious. So I put mind pretty low. Um, Mm -hmm. I was like, not very aware, not very observant, kind of like if River has a crush, has never like picked up on any signs, Mm -hmm. um, not aware of people around them. So the mind is D4 and then spirit is D8. Uh, to feel like she's making art she's passionate and then the body's just average she's like you know i go to gym class I'm not happy about it mm-hmm. uh, but no one would no one would peg her for an athlete so that's where she sits and for june i went with um actually the same spread as allison um d8 spirit d6 body d4 mind um and it, yeah for obviously for very different reasons because they're pretty different people I, I see her, I see June as being very strong, but not like really standing out for being physically strong. Mm-hmm. Like I, I picture her as enduring, right? There's a lot of stuff in her background that's like, um, I'm struggling, I'm getting through, et cetera. So she's she's very good at enduring things, especially like uh, emotionally. And I think that that probably does grant her a certain kind of charisma, whether she knows it or not, because people can just sort of see that she's like rock solid. I think um, you have like strong opinions. Too. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, stop, yeah. Stop. Like, work hard at the stupid job. <laughs> right. Uh, right. And slacker. Um, yeah. Like, we're paying you. You need to do it. And, exactly. Yeah. And then, um, body, body D6, because I definitely see her as, as like enduring as somebody who's like, 
physically, whatever, you know, if we had to hike 10 miles, she would be the last person complaining. Um, mm. And then, yeah. And then like mind, mind is at the bottom, but it is also like, I, I, it gives me an image of her as somebody who succeeds through grinding, you know, like she, yeah. she's not like the brilliant student who things come easily to, but she probably is somebody who's getting very good grades because she hands in every damn assignment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think like I remember the, my my roommate my first year of college was one of those kind of people. It was like we would do so like she was on the basketball team and stuff, but um, she would study for like hours and hours and hours. And she'd be like, why aren't you? And I was like, well, it's I mean, it's just like a quiz. You know, Like right. there are people that it's like you show up and you take the test and that's fine. And then there are people that like also get really good grades, but they do have to like work for it and mm, i think yeah. you're the kind of person that like everything you do is because you worked for it exactly. like you earned it mm -hmm. yep exactly it, it feels like uh river and june have that same sort of mentality when it comes to schoolwork, uh which i think would be kind of like a, a thing they would they would probably bond over yeah yeah, yeah. i think they're gonna have a lot in common then watch it's, it's those the, filthy creative artists just off in a field chasing butterflies. It's right. going to be that we have to. We would have to have a scene of us like, oh no, there's a test where we have to study together, and like while well, the other two are just off doing fun stuff. But I also feel like you're still studying the night before because you're like, I yeah. have other priorities. Like I'm going to do school because I have to show up for school, yeah. but like. River is like, I also have the swimming competition and I, you know, like that's how I'm going to get into college is not through my grades, but through like scholarship, mm -hmm. you know? And I think, um, June is like, no, I, I need to like, I have a job and I need to work and I don't need to do this, you know, mm -hmm. stupid English class where I read Charles Dickens. That's not going to help me. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I think it's definitely right. Also, I think we're onto the, the hardest know, that's part. Like the world? The hardest part. The world oh, building? No, we're not to the world building. There's one thing oh. on these character sheets that is built in. There's a big blank box. Oh, wait, sorry. The transformation. Oh, you're right. I always phrase. like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, and also, pose. Don't, don't forget mm -hmm. pose. Sorry. You're right. The hardest thing. Oh, wow. I can't believe I did that. <laughs> I forget it a lot. And as a GM, it's my favorite thing. Uh -huh. Um, we even actually commissioned a friend of mine who's a, like an award-winning musician to make a 30 second transformation. Oh my God. Uh, music. And when you, it's in the episode guide, but it's like when, when a magical girl transforms for the first time, you play it and they have to describe in detail their whole transformation. So. I love it. I won't know my actual transformation yet, but I think I can come up with a transformation phrase at this point. Beautiful. Do you have one in mind? Do you have a really good pun? I it's it's brewing right now. I feel like I want mine to be something about like bringing the heat. It's oh you, I think oh, bring, come on. bring the heat Just, is all you need. I think uh, it's, yeah, and it's then right obviously there. it's jazz hands, and then also I feel like the outfit change is like. Do you like in the second Hunger Games movie where like Katniss is wearing the dress and she like twirls oh, the, around? The fire dress? Maybe it's the third one. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it, where, where it like is like whoosh. on fire and then like it, it looks like that. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So the so mine is not very funny, but I have I have a justification. Um it's gonna be blossom into beauty and power. And it's definitely like there's like a like a I'm pulling my hands up as though I'm blossoming into a flower. I and what it. I'm what I'm picturing here is that like it's specifically that um okay I I even if everybody here has seen the wilds, I can't trust that everybody in the audience will have seen the wilds, but June has dot from the wilds energy, which is to say like low key butchy energy. Like this is not like a very like glamorous person. It's a big sure. practical clothes and just like going mm -hmm. about their day. But then their their transformed form is absolutely like completely frilly and like there's gods oh, I love and there's that. lace and there's like little embroidered pink flowers all over everything. Um, so she's gonna. I think have there's to... like like falling like flower petals in the background oh, as this yes. is happening. Yes. Like Sakura <laughs> blossom. Like. Yeah. So yeah. she's going to have to she's going to have to see see how it feels to be living the Ben life for a while. I <laughs> love that. Uh, my transformation phrase is going to be you're about to be dust in the wind. 
and uh, Sky will point very specifically at whoever's butt she's about to kick. Uh, and then a tornado will like go up and then down. And it's going to be very quick. Uh, oh. And she'll be transformed. All right. Uh, my transformation phrase is going to be time to get into the deep end. <laughs> and oh my uh, god! And and her uh, uh, transformation sequence would be um, it, it would have to be like uh, like a, a flow of water comes from off screen. Um, and then kind of bends around her like a river. Can I can I also suggest something? And you can yeah, say please. you can say no. Um, but I was thinking like rain falling or whatever, and as it like goes over you, things kind of like change from like top to bottom, Ooh. like or like even like a waterfall if you wanted. But like, I like but also yours is a river, aspect. so like that's good too. Yeah, I was thinking uh, like the river kind of splitting around me, and then kind of the water coming from below. Okay. And then once the water recedes, like it covers me in like a cocoon. And then once it recedes, mm -hmm. then like the, the dress kind of starts appearing from top yes. to bottom. I yes. love it. <sighs> it's beautiful. I'm so excited. We also, if we were doing this on physical paper, um, there is a point later where we get to draw like the, the outfit onto a mannequin. So. Oh, wonderful. My artist. I wonder, I wonder what my pose would be, I guess. Yeah. I guess it would be like a kind of like a hands up and then like down to the side. Like a diving pose. It should be like, yeah. like what does a like... butterfly, what does a butterfly stroke look like? Well, you got to dive off like... the boards first. Yeah, right? there you go. Yeah. There you go. It's like the diving in. Yeah. Diving yeah. into the deep end. Mwah. Yeah. Call to action. Yeah, like that. Ryan, I need to find the <laughs> screenshot that I took while we were recording these episodes and put it on Twitter um, because you just had like the biggest smile on your face and I had to capture it. Like normally yeah. we put out our video stuff, but I took a screenshot of it because you were like, I don't think I've ever seen you smile that hard. <laughs> yeah. You're having such a good time. Oh, it was fantastic. Uh, this game, uh, we, we didn't get to the world building yet this episode that's coming next uh, next week. But my my goodness, mm -hmm. uh, it l checked literally every single every single box on my list of like, hey, uh, give me a game that I want to play uh, that involves magical girls. And goodness gracious, this delivers in spades. Yeah, we got to do a lot with this one. I just I enjoyed so much of the the stuff that we created and just like the way we flavored everything. It was mm -hmm. ugh, it was good. It was good. It was so good. Um. Oh, <laughs> it is. No, I wasn't sure about this one because, you know, like I've said that lots of times, there are times yeah. where I'm like not sure about a game. And this one was like, OK, you know, like I'm in it because I know that it's for Ryan. Yeah, it's awesome. I had a great time. I had a great yeah, time. There was a lot of good stuff in there, there for really, you, too. Yeah. yeah. I can't wait for people oh. to hear the rest of the series. I wanted Absolutely. it all to come out at once. And it's, like, <laughs> it's, it's hurting me that it's not all there already. Uh huh. Uh, but yeah, so uh, before we go for next week, uh, we do have some calls to action as well as a lot more details about that Patreon that we announced at the beginning of the show. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are interested in what you've been hearing in today's episode uh, and, and trust us, uh, it gets so much better next episode even. Uh, absolutely check out the Kickstarter link in the show notes. Uh, the campaign is set to launch next week, Tuesday, June 14th. And it's always helpful to the campaigns to save the campaign for before the launch. So uh, that doesn't cost you anything to click that little button. Uh, so you might as well check it out. Yeah, absolutely. I think it helps promote them on the Kickstarter website. And also, if you're like me, sometimes you forget about a Kickstarter yeah. that you really want to back. And then it helpfully emails you. Absolutely. So, yeah, always good. Before we let you go, though, it's time for the big reveal I say as if it's like not revealed already um <laughs> our new patreon so yeah. in the cold open we went over just like the very basic details we're really excited so if you're listening to this on the day that it's released uh next week's episode should already be up in our patreon feed um so people can get that in advance if you love what you've been hearing that's mm -hmm. i think probably like our, our biggest 
uh, most exciting thing at the moment for me because I want people to hear the rest of this episode. That's my, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you finish this and you're like, what next? If I got a deal for you. Uh-huh. Um, so that's in our bonus feed at the $5 and up level. Um, if Ryan was extra ambitious this week, we'll see. Maybe the last episode will be up. Um, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, we'll see where the e- day takes us. <laughs> I mean, either either way, it'll be up within a week. So you, you can uh, look forward to that. So yeah, uh, I'm really excited for that. Um, in addition to that, at the one dollar and up level, uh, we're going to have bonus outtakes from all the series. Uh, we already have the infamous one uh, from series 50. Uh, it's it's about two hours long or so. Yes, to be clear, it's more than what's in the episode. There are some things in the episode, but there's a lot of stuff that we could not put in the episode for a variety of reasons. Yeah, there's uh, there's some content warnings on that, so check yeah. those out uh, before listening. But uh, yeah, we recorded those with Dylan and Aram from Kill Every Monster uh, podcast, and and that's waiting for you right now in the feed. Um, and at, also at the one dollar and up level, we'll thank you personally on the show, uh, and you get access to a patron only. Uh, Discord channels in our Discord server. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the $5 and up level, I'm, I'm not going to say this for every single level, so I'll just say it now. You get everything from the previous levels. Um, <laughs> at the $5 and up level, you get all of those things. Plus, um, you have access to some more full bonus episodes, including ones that were in the One Shot Patreon feed. We have now added those to our feed and We'll have other things in there going forward. This mm-hmm. level um, also gets you access to those early episodes that we just talked about. Mm-hmm. It also gets you handmade thank you note from me because I have nicer handwriting than Ryan and I have so all of this stuff to like hand <laughs> yeah. make cards and I love doing it. I'm very excited. Um, if you prefer that we don't have your address though, which is a totally reasonable, normal thing to, to do, uh, we will send you a digital thank you note though. Mm-hmm. Then at the $10 and up level, you will get the chance to join us for monthly Zoom chats. Uh, mm-hmm. So every month we will host a call with patrons to talk about games, our favorite movies, um, or, or even just catch up on life. It'll just be a, a free for all fun Zoom time with, yeah, uh, with all the patrons. Yeah, we don't have any specific agenda. It's just like hanging out, you know? Yeah, uh, it's, it's uh, C5. C5. Uh, ca- character creation cast coffee conversation. You have to provide your own coffee, though. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, at $20 and up, we will schedule some time with you personally throughout the year uh, in order to brainstorm any pressing character creation questions that you might have. So if you want to come up with specific character like you're playing a campaign and you want to talk about character ideas um if you want world building and setting advice or even if you want to chat about game design we will set up a personal call with you to talk about your gaming concerns yeah absolutely uh it's basically paying us for consultation so Mm -hmm. uh yeah i I think that would be really fun character creation cast consultation something (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll progressively more c's <laughs> somewhere in there and then uh finally at the 50 dollar uh and up level uh we will uh, either run a game or play in a game that you run uh, if you want to be the gm go for it for at least uh once a year for you and up to four friends uh this also includes a separate session zero to create characters uh, and talk about what you want from the, the game. Because we couldn't do it without a session zero. Absolutely. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Always. Always. Always a session zero. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was a lot of information to throw at you. We promise, though, that this is the only time that we are going to go through and list every single level. We will mm. do it on every episode. That would be really annoying. Yep. But you can definitely check all of this information out on the website at patreon.com slash character creation cast. We are so thankful to have all of your support, whether it is financial or not. I want to be really clear on that, that mm-hmm. like we, we love you no matter what. This just lets us kind of gives us a little more free space to do some of the things that we're really excited to do. 
Mm-hmm. So whether it is financially backing us or just listening to the show and telling people about the show and or even just talking to us about the show, uh, we're really glad to have you here. Absolutely. Uh, so having said all of that, uh, we wanted to send a very heartfelt thank you to Lou Tennant, uh, our very first patron, uh, and has been a gracious test driver of our Patreon services for the past week plus. Uh, we announced our Patreon launch ahead of time on our Discord server, uh, and we've had some really great discussions already in the patron-only area uh, of the Discord with Lou, uh, and we were ecstatic to see that first pledge come in. Uh, so again, Lou, thank you so much for your continued support. Another way to support our show that does not cost anything is with reviews. Yes, it's me, Amelia, here for our review pledge drive. Uh, No, I'm not going to use my NPR voice. Uh, You can easily leave a review on Apple Podcasts from anywhere. Uh, You can leave them on Podchaser or Podcast Addict. Um, If there are places that you've left reviews that we don't usually name, please let us know because we do love reading your reviews on our show and we would Mm -hmm. like to go find them. Uh, This week, though, we do actually have a new review. I'm very excited. Mm -hmm. Uh, This one came in from Rory on Podcast Addict. Amelia and Ryan and expert guests make character creation in a variety of role-playing games. Most of the characters will be incredibly cursed and or magical girls or witches. (laughs) You'll learn and laugh. Also, this is the way I found out you can make a sentient car as a D&D character. You certainly can. (laughs) Can? Should? A hundred, a hundred percent. You should. Mm, um, maybe ninety nine percent. We'll leave a little wiggle room for those. Yes. There you Thank go. you so much, Rory. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, uh, folks. That's it for today's episode. Uh, thank you again so much for joining us, uh, and we hope you are enjoying the changes uh, we've been going through, uh, going into our fifth year here at Character Creation Cast. Uh, We are looking forward to what this next year will bring, and we can't wait for you to see what we all have in store. Until next time, take care, stay safe, drink some water, uh, maybe relax your jaw and your shoulders. I need to do that every now and then. I need the reminder, always. Absolutely. And as always, keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us for part one of this character creation series. We'll be back in part two, picking up right where we left off. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Amelia Antrim, and I can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning or on my other podcast, Garbage of the Five Rings. Our other host, Ryan Bolter, can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast it originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by the absolutely fantastic Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game system used in today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you'd like to support our show, find us on Patreon. Get access to bonus episodes, extra outtakes, and much, much more at patreon.com slash character creation cast. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We'll see you next time. We gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. 
Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com where you will find other great shows like Skyjack's Career's Call. In all ages friendly, actual play podcasts set in the world of fear, Skyjack's Career's Call follows three teens as they set out as new apprentices aboard an airship with the Swiftwell Courier Service, bringing mail and adventure across the world. Featuring Drew Merzieski, Palomi Pertau, and Aaron Catano Saez, and Ali Grauer, and using the Cortex Prime system, the show is perfect for anyone just getting started in listening to actual plays or veterans of the tabletop genre alike. Join clever but anxious Kieran, bold, fast talking Cece, and loyal, strong June aboard the Red Argent ship as they sort and deliver mail, encounter powerful magic, and learn the proper skills of an Ariner along the way. Right wrongs, do mercies, and take flight.